In 2015 alone, 429,000 people around the world died of malaria. And 212 million people had this disease. 212 million. That's more than three times the entire population of France. Now, take a moment to think of the hundreds of thousands of others who died that same year from a number of other infectious diseases. So my journey with microfluidics started around four years ago when I was in high school. It was actually just after my third year of high school. And the summer before, I was working in a leishmaniasis lab at the FDA. And leishmaniasis is an infectious disease caused by a parasite. And I was curious as to how we can detect parasites in the bloodstream at very, very, very low levels at a very early stage. So this problem of detecting things, especially parasites, tumor cells, things that generally aren't good for our bodies at an early stage, is something that many people have thought about. So I was doing some research, and because I wanted to go to Harvard, I looked specifically at Harvard Labs, and I found a professor working with drop-based microfluidics. Um, his name is Professor David Waits. And microfluidics um, is a sort of a technology that allows you to encapsulate cells from the blood, and therefore detect cancer cells or parasites, or whatever you're sort of looking for at an early stage from the bloodstream. And these two weeks have been a lot of sort of information sharing, knowledge gathering, tech transfer. It's been less about getting experiments done and more about me bringing the knowledge that I know from Harvard so that people here at IIT Bombay can continue working on it um, so that here, Dave Johnny Paul can get samples from hospitals like KEM that are nearby, which do have malaria samples that can be tested in our device. So the whole purpose was sort of to have the two groups meet each other. You could use this technique or this platform in settings where there's no lab, where there's no electricity. In even a small health outpost, all you would need to do is take someone's blood, mix it with a bunch of different reagents, which is a very short process, pipette it into the device, put it on a hot plate, which could be battery powered, or even in the heat of the sun in a number of cases, and then image it with a mobile phone camera, or there are a number of other techniques, like a fold scope, which is a cheap microscope, to be able to quantify how much disease that patient has. For instance, we visited KEM Hospital where we wanted to see how people are currently diagnosing malaria in these municipal hospitals and you know how many people are actually coming every single day, what are the rates of malaria, and I think that was a very important visit because until then we didn't actually realize how people were m diagnosing malaria at the time, what the technicians were doing, the exact techniques they were using, how long it was taking, and what the hospital workers themselves thought were, was important for them to see. So I think that often, especially coming from the US or from any developed nations, you come in with a sort of savior complex. You come in with this idea that I know what the issue is, I know how to solve it, and this is where, where I need to fix it. But I think what is so important about this visit is that we don't simply assume we know what is happening, but we actually try to learn from others who are actually living in zones that might have malaria. but we have identified one of the existing interns in the lab who would um, sort of carry on the work that Neil and Mirai would do. I think this project does have a very good scope ahead because in places like India, like we know that there, there's, really need, there's real need of diagnosis at point of care because not every place has a hospital or a laboratory to process samples and to diagnose diseases. The hope is that within the next year and through our collaboration with IIT, we will actually be able to fix these issues and truly be scalable.